I'm Sebastian St. James. You are investing in the wrong countries. Today we'll find out which are the best performing stock markets right across the entire world to see if you should actually be investing there instead. In a previous video, one of my viewers said, hmm, dare I ask about Africa and South American markets? Dare accepted. And what about stock markets in Europe and Asia? Oh, he's on a roll, isn't he? I bet his next questions are going to be about Turkey and Azerbaijan. So let's solve everything in one video. What are the best performing markets right across the world? Here we go. To be the best, obviously you need to beat something. So who is being beaten right now? This is Vietnam. It is the worst stock market in the world. Oh, Sebastian, that's a bit harsh. It's true. I'm just reading out facts here. As far as its performance over the last 12 months go, Vietnam returned over that period minus 43.29%. Yes, that means down. That means lost. All this data is right up to date as far as the recording of this video. So in my world, all this data is completely live. This is Japan. Over the last 12 months, Japan has lost 42.99%. Wow. Of course, Japan used to be one of the hottest markets in the entire world. The Japanese asset price bubble was an economic bubble in Japan from 1986 to 1991. The question is, what's it doing lately? Here it is. This is a Japanese stock market from early 2016. It was actually higher than it is today. What's that, some seven years ago? Yeah, I am not impressed. This is Nairobi. And Nairobi has a special honor. What's that? Well, right now, it is the worst stock market in Africa. Oh, such an honor. Nairobi, over the last 12 months, performed minus 28.65%. This is Colombia. Colombia has a special honor. What is that honor, Sebastian? I loved your last one. Well, it is the worst stock market in the Americas. Oh. Colombia, in the last 12 months, lost 27.32%. Here are some other countries, and to save time, I can't focus on every country, but I'll list them for completeness. This is Slovakia. It also gets a special honor. What's that? Well, it's the worst stock market in Europe over the last 12 months. Oh, how exciting for it. Slovakia returned minus 18.49%. Here are some more countries for you to ponder, and they haven't done so well. This is Hong Kong. Over the last 12 months, it has lost 5.54%. Let's look at your graph. In the earlier part, actually, it looks pretty good to me. But from about 2007 onwards, your price has gone nowhere. Oh. Hong Kong is interesting because it was actually handed over from the Brits to the Chinese. The question is, when did that happen? And can we see that reflected in the actual stock market's price? Well, the handover ceremony took place on the 30th of June, 1997. Okay, let me pull that up. So end of June, beginning of July, that's what I've marked now in yellow. So prior to the yellow, it was the Brits owned it, and then afterwards, it's, it's the Chinese. It started off okay, but arguably lately, it hasn't been doing very well. In fact, that's, yeah, from 2007. Wow, okay. There's Thailand's return. This is Taiwan. Over the last year, it's lost 5.23%. That's Switzerland and Finland. This is China. China lost 4.55%. Let's look at your market. Oh dear, okay. 2007 was your peak, and you've basically been doing nothing ever since. Wow, a whole lot of movement, actually nothing achieved. So, should you invest in China? Well, that's the graph. What do you think? Here are the returns of some other countries for you. This is Canada. Over the last 12 months, Canada has lost 2.38%. And this is its graph. Actually, it's pretty good. Look at that. All right, so we're going all the way back to 1981. And it's fairly consistent. We see the tech crash there, yes. A little bit rough, but overall, it's, it's pretty amazing, actually. And they haven't lost much from their peak. So yeah, that looks investable to me. And there's Romania's return. This is Singapore. Singapore has lost 2.01%. Here's the returns for Malta in the Philippines. This is Australia. I'm sorry, that seems to be out of date. Melbourne is now officially Australia's biggest city, overtaking Sydney, and that was reported on the 17th of April, 2023. 
fancy that. Because metropolitan Melbourne is now the biggest city in the entire country, this is Australia. Australia has a special honour. Oh, okay, what is it? Is the worst stock market in Australasia over the last 12 months. Oh, goody. To be fair, based on the data source which I'm using for all these country results, there's only two. There's only Australia and New Zealand, and we were the worst. Australia lost 1.68%. Okay, show me the graph. This is the Australian Stock Market Index Composite. That doesn't exist. What are they talking about? I presume they mean the All Ordinaries, but that's an interesting way of phrasing it. So we go all the way back to 1984 and we're growing, growing, growing. Of course, 2007 came. We all know what happened then. And then we've took a little while to recover and we've grown beyond it. Isn't that interesting how dominant 2007 really is there? Australia, of course, received dividends and it pays out handsomely. So your return would have been a lot higher than what's shown on this graph. But to be fair, other countries pay out dividends as well. But it's quite staggering how long it's actually taken to go beyond the 2007 level. And I would say that's around about 2020 where it actually surpassed the 2007 level, which is 13 years. Okay. This is the United States. Oh, I'm sorry, that appears to be fake news. This is the United States. It lost, over the last 12 months, 1.28%. Wow, look at its graph. It's actually substantially different from Australia, but to be fair, it's gone all the way back to 1930. Oh, well, that's why it looks so different. And which market are you? Oh, okay, you are the S&P 500. Can we see the 2007? Yes, we can. But wow, has that grown beyond 2007? That's substantially different from Australia. If in your mind you ever think, oh, Australia, US, more or less the same, look at the two graphs and judge for yourself. And here's some other countries for you. Australia's actually got a few more. There's the ASX 200, which showed you before the All Ordinaries, the ASX 50, and Jordan has finally gone green. Hooray, something has gone positive. This is the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ 100 has actually gained 0.22%. Good for you. And this is its graph. Well, wow, isn't that interesting? That's a tech crash, you see, right at the turn of the century. Took a little while to recover, but boy, has it recovered. But lately it's pulled back. If you look at the longer term, it's not doing too bad. Here's some other countries for you, which have all done pretty well. This is New Zealand. There's something you should know about New Zealand, or oh, what is it? It is the best stock market in Australasia over the last 12 months. whoop de doo Look, there's only two. Australia underperformed, New Zealand, but well done. The Shire returned 3.1%. No, that doesn't look right. New Zealand returned 3.1%. And there's its graph. Actually, that doesn't look too bad at all. So if we go back to 2007, Hardly a dip. Look at that. Wow, that's quite different from Australia, isn't it? I would say 2013, 13 and a half, it recovered and it's basically been going up. Oh, a bit of a dip there at 2020 where people were locked in their houses. Yeah, overall, very impressed with that. Oh, I just got a thanks. Hi, Sebastian. Thanks for your videos. Oh, you're welcome, Ivan. I've thought of two different strategies to beat the market. Wow. Let's find out what they are. One, using the dumb money and the smart money index. And the other using the fear and greed index. DCA, which is dollar cost averaging, into the market when the sentiment is low. Could you make a video comparing these two strategies, please? That I can do for you. In fact, I'm going to make you two videos because you've sort of asked two questions and I think they'd both deserve their own special dedicated video. So that's what I'll do for you. So, thank you very much, Ivan. I very much appreciate that. Your name's not Ivan, is it? I've been calling you Ivan the entire time. Now, Ivan's given me a big thanks, and that means that his questions go right up the question queue. Hmm, I know, impressive. So if you, like Ivan, find one of my videos helpful, and you want your questions bumped up the question queue, and we all want that, hit the thanks button below the video. This is the United Kingdom. I'm sorry, that seems to be out of date. This is the United Kingdom. In the last 12 months, it gained 3.12%. Oh, very good. Let's have a look at its graph. Oh, well. So it's really from the tech wreck. From the turn of the century, it's basically leveled out, just going up and down, going absolutely nowhere. Around about 2014, it decided to grow a bit and yeah, it hasn't done so well. 
to be honest. But to be fair, it's actually reached a new high and hopefully it's all up from here. This is a Euro area. The Euro what? Well, that's what they call themselves. The Euro area has gained 3.33%. And this is its graph. Wow, okay, what's happened there? Oh, I see, at the beginning of 2020, all hell broke loose. Where am I going back from? Oh, 2016, so it's only fairly recently. So we are a little bit more zoomed in than some of the other graphs. But I don't know, I'd like to see more. But based on what I'm seeing right now, I'm not that impressed. Here are some other countries which have all gone positive. This is Russia. Russia's gained 8.74% over the last 12 months. And this is its graph. Well, look, it's doing fairly well. If you have a look at that throughout its history and on and on until suddenly around about 2020, 2021. No, it started tumbling down when apparently Russia fell out of favor. Here's some other countries that have done actually fairly well with Lithuania at the top, 11.4%. You've got to love that. This is Germany. Over the last year, Germany has returned 12.32%. And look at its graph. Actually, I kind of like that. It's basically had its steady projection all the way up. We see the tech wreck. We see the global financial crisis. And then it's basically been going up and up. Yep, a lot to like there. Here's a couple of more countries for you. This is France. Though I suspect I see a German there. Over the last 12 months, it's returned 14.43%. And this is its graph. Oh, okay. Massive peak around the turn of the century, and then basically it was just downhill until very recently. Yeah, not so impressed, but it does look as if it's at a new high, so well done. Here's a few more countries with Kazakhstan at the top. Here it is, we've reached the special part in the video. Oh, what is it? I can hardly wait. Where I reveal to you the top 10 best stock markets in the entire world over the last 12 months. Wow, how exciting. Is it your stock market? Well, if you live in Australia, no. Sorry, been there, done that. This is Greece. Over the last year, it returned 20.77%. Wow, that is impressive. Here is its graph. No, no, not impressive. Okay. Two little humps, what do they remind you of? Well, they remind me of the tech wreck and the global financial crisis. And basically it's been going down, down, down ever since. I'll have to take your word that you return 20%, but based on that graph, it's a hard pass from me. This is Montenegro. Over the last 12 months, it's returned 44.92%, which is not too bad. Let's look at the graph. Oh, okay. Well, it was going flat, 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 where from 2017 onwards. And look at those massive drops there, like vertical and then shot back up. This reminds me of the flash crash in the US where the stock market plummeted and then like within the same day came back up. Is that what's been going on? Have you had some high frequency trading going on that's wrecked your market? Hmm. But of course, lately it's got past that and been doing rather well. Are your problems over? Maybe, but I have my concerns. This is Zimbabwe. It's grown over the last 12 months, 50.16%. And here's its stock graph, wow, okay. 2010, it's flat, 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 flat. And then only lately in 2021, which is actually a bit later. So all the other crashes happened at the beginning of 2020. This is like a year later. And it's on basically a vertical rise. Okay, very interesting. The question is why? What's going on with the country? Is this stellar rise actually sustainable? <laughs> and to that, you need to find out exactly what's going on. But it's certainly impressive. This is a Cyprus. Over the last 12 months, 55.25% gain. Wow. But if I look at the stock price, I don't see that. But I am seeing something entirely different. Well, what am I seeing? Okay, 2007, the world went to hell in the handbasket. Cyprus, absolutely, was right there at the top. Showing the others exactly how it's not done. And then it crashed, crashed, crashed. Oh, goodness me, look at that. But that's a hard pass from me. And now it's time for a new award. Oh, hopefully they're good awards now. This is the best stock market in Africa. Okay, what's that? This is Egypt. Egypt returned 55.73%. Okay, very good. And what's your graph look like? Well, overall, you've been doing fairly well. You look a little bit tumultuous to me. All right, 2007, that hit you hard. And your peak was around about 2018, and you're basically, well, you haven't even reached that level now, okay. Well, a lot to ponder there. This 
is Lao. Lao returned 76.51%, which is quite incredible, until you look at its graph and, well, I don't really see that. 2013 to 15 were the best times of your life and it's just been down, down, down since then. And look, that little flash crash there. This is Lebanon. And Lebanon has an award. Oh, what is it? Well, it's the best stock market in Asia. Wow. Lebanon returned 80.73%. Let's have a look at your graph. It's got that little flash crash as well. Okay. That always worries me. This is Turkey. And it gets an award. Wow. What is it? Aren't we running out of continents to praise? Well, yes, we are. But it's the best stock market in Europe. Hooray. Turkey, over the last 12 months, has returned 82.72%. Okay, show me. Wow, okay, well that is impressive. So this goes back all the way to 1990. Okay, that's why it's the shape of the graph. Look at that exponential growth. But it's had a, a fall from grace slightly there. Uh, it says it's had a massive return this year. I'll take its word for it. Overall, does it look too bad? You'd have to go into the economy and find out what's actually happening, see if it's going to support that growth going forward, or really, was it something that's unsustainable? This is Argentina. Over the last 12 months, it's returned 229.46%. Oh, I see, yes. That actually reminds me a lot of Turkey, okay. Where do we go? Oh, 1992. The further we go back, the flatter that will appear. That makes sense. This is almost like the perfect stock graph. Whether it's sustainable is a big, big question. So you'd really have to investigate that. But that's an investigation you'll have to make if you're interested. And here we are. We have finally arrived. The best country in the entire world over the last 12 months. What is it? Well, it's a handbag. Oh, this is Venezuela. Apparently their money is so valuable, they've turned it into handbags. Over the last 12 months, Venezuela has returned 458,000%. That's not what that says. 458.49%. It may as well be 1,000. It's that impressive. And if we look at its graph, oh wow, it's the Twin Towers. Okay, what's going on there? A whole lot of pain and suffering, I suspect. Venezuela and some of these other countries have had massive inflation and that is why you've seen their stock price go up because this money is worth less. And based on their stock graph at the moment, I'm not particularly impressed actually. I think you'd have to be brave because that's entirely up to you. So there you have it. That has answered all your questions. They're the best performing countries in the entire world. Some of those countries actually do interest me. Others, buyer beware. Of course, if all that sounds too much, you can stay right here at home and you can buy dividend stocks on the ASX. But to know that, you're going to have to find out what are the best dividend stocks on the market right now in 2023. Only I know that, or you will once you watch this video, or if you've seen that, click here.